Jake for Tannen signs about a week before what would have been his arbitration hearing. Two years sat, 2.55 AAV. Do you like this contract for the Canucks? Well, the Canucks would have loved to get a one-year deal, but getting a two-year contract for Jake for Tannen at a number that's less than the arbitration award was likely going to be. And considering how cash is an issue this season as well for the Canucks and most teams in the National Hockey League, I think they're happy getting him a 2.55 for two years to keep that number down. And in case Jake does have a break, let's just say that Jake Vertanen has that breakout year we're waiting for, then the Canucks have him at a good number for year two. 18 goals uh, last season, of course, uh, before the pause. Um, there's always talk about moving Jake Vertanen, and there's interest around the league. Do you think it's a chip that Benning might play now before this season? I'd say it's the best chip they have to play, the likeliest chip they have to play, but it's still unlikely that Jake Vertanen gets traded. The thing with Jake Vertanen getting traded is, what are you getting back in return that will make Jim Benning pull that trigger? We know that he's not delighted with getting a mid-round pick for Jake or something like a B prospect or something. So it has to be a player they feel helps them right now. And for Jake's value, I'm not sure you're going to get that in return right now. Do you think Jake is happy that he's not going to be sitting in an arbitration hearing? I'm sure he is. And we all know the conversations around Jake Vertanen. And we heard Jake himself. He wasn't too happy about what Jim Benning had to say about him after the playoffs. Not that he was critical of Jim Benning, but you could tell it bothered him that Jim said he expected more from him in the playoffs. So the fact that he avoids going through that in detail, not to mention all the other things the organization may know about that we don't know about that they want to dig out, you can avoid that. And for Jake, I think he's one of those guys that needs positive reinforcement. Avoiding that situation might make it easier for him to play in Vancouver next season. Do you think there's a chance he starts in the top six? I think Louis Erickson might have a better chance of start starting in the top six. And I'm not trying to be funny, really. It's just being real about the way Travis Green runs his roster. We're going to see Jake play in the top six, especially when they're trailing, trying to score goals. If they're trying to protect leads. Louis Erickson hasn't been bought out, and he played in the playoffs. I'm still looking at safety being the chief concern for Travis when he looks at the players he has to choose from. So if I'm choosing from the players on the current roster, Louis might have a better chance. If they bring back a Josh Lebo, for instance, I think that guy would have a better chance of being in the top six under Travis Green consistently. You mentioned buyout. A second buyout window has opened. Do you think Benning will use it? No, I don't think so, Murph. And, you know, we'd love to see it because it creates more action, more discussion. The Canucks might go out and sign a free agent. The big question I have is, number one, do they feel comfortable paying another player to not play for them and also replacing said player who they believe is an important aspect of their penalty kill? I just don't see them getting rid of Sutter without having a good or better replacement, and that's going to cost money. It just doesn't add up right now. Last question. Do you think Benning's done his tinkering if there's no move for Vertanen? I'd, I'd say so. I think we're looking at minor deals. You saw Harluck sign for 800 k 200000 as a two-way contract. The offers that have been out there for Levo, I think, were less than a million. They might sign a defenseman. They might sign a forward for less than a million on a one-year deal, but that might be the extent of the action we see from the Canucks from this point on. Yeah, Benning has said he's going to need some young guys to make the roster. Certainly we should see some on defense, and you never know with Hoaglander and someone else coming from Russia.